Hello dear students, I am Dr. Mayuddin. In this video, we are going to learn about electromagnetic radiations. An organic chemist always has two major problems. Number one is the separation of compound of interest from the mixture or from natural source, mean he has prepared something in the laboratory and that he has obtained in the form of mixture but he is interested in some specific compound so definitely he wants to separate that compound and number two to ensure that his he has separated the right compound so definitely he need to perform some chemical analysis so there have been different methods which are being used since years and the methods used for separations are solvent extraction, distillation, crystallization, sublimation. These are used today too even. And the methods which have been used conventionally for analysis purpose, uh, for example, for qualitative analysis, there is a con conventional chemical test in which uh, we perform basic tests for the identification of elements, for identification of functional groups and so on and this makes our qualitative analysis and for quantitative analysis the classical methods which are in practice they are gravimetric analysis and volumetric method by which we can find out the quantity of our compound with the development of knowledge new methods appear definitely and one of them is chromatography which is widely being used these days for the separation of components of mixture. Then invention of spectroscope in the end of 19th century further revolutionized the whole analytical process. In the beginning, spectroscope was being used only for qualitative analysis. With the development in quantum mechanics and in electronics, we can say with the development in science and technology in next century, the use of spectroscope was became more wider and wider. Now, what is spectroscopy? It has been observed that definitely different substances have different physical properties and different substances they have different chemical substances compounds in them and they have different functional groups so these physical properties could be related to some of these functional groups any physical property of a substance can be made basis of a method for its structural and analytical determination means definitely a substance may have different physical property and some of its pro property may be helpful for us for us for determination of its structure and other analytical information about it and one of the property is the interaction of electromagnetic radiations with the substances so here we we are going to see the definition of spectroscopy and what is that spectroscopy is actually it is the interaction of electromagnetic radiation with matter so in this technique we do interact electromagnetic radiation with matter and what what is the purpose behind because we want to know we want to get information about our sample what is present in present inside and in what quantity that is present there are different types of spectroscopy but the basic principle of all of all of them is same so here is the basic schematic diagram of spectroscopy principle let's see here is the light source so this is the light source uh, which actually emits the 
electromagnetic radiations. The next part could be the collimator to focus these electromagnetic radiation on some specific part. Now, these electromagnetic radiations coming from the source, they, they could be the polychromatic. Polychromatic mean they may consist of different wavelength and we might be interested to interact a single wavelength radiation with our sample. So to get radiation of single wavelength mean monochromatic light, we must have to use monochromata. So here's the monochromata. Now what is monochromata? Monochromata is the device which convert polychromatic light into monochromatic light. And actually it consists of prisms and grading devices which disperse light into its components. As you can see in this diagram, white light is being converted into its components. Then we have set uh, our wavelength selector on some specific wavelength which we want to interact with our sample. So here's the wavelength selector. For example, we want to interact only the yellow color light with our sample. So only yellow color is allowed to pass from here. The next part is the sample. So light inter light passes through the sample. Some of the portion will be absorbed. Rest may be transmitted. The next part is the detector and then display recorder where we get the reading uh, in the form of digits absorption or it might get in the form of spectrum. Now what is electromagnetic radiation? It is the transmission of energy or you can say it's a propagation of energy. It's also known as radiant energy. For example, ordinary light is the form of radiant energy the sunlight or tube light so that is an electromagnetic radiation we see sunlight on daily basis and it appears to us as white light but let me tell you that this is not a monochromatic light this is not a single wavelength light actually it is a mixture of different colors different components which can be resolved by passing it through prism and whenever we pass white light through prism, it is separated into its components. And we get a continuous band of color. We get a continuous pattern. And Newton was the first who gave this pattern name as spectrum. Now, visible light, it represents only small portion of EMR, means Electromagnetic radiation is not only the visible light. There are more radiations which are the part of electromagnetic radiations like ultraviolet, infrared radiations, X-rays, gamma rays, cosmic rays, and so on. So we'll go, uh, we'll go through these radiations in upcoming slides. The quantum mechanics suggests that electromagnetic radiation has dual nature I mean it possess some of the properties which resemble waves while other properties which resemble particles for example it contains discrete packet of energy called photons or radiation quantum and this property resembles with particles But when we are dealing with interaction of electromagnetic radiation with matter, actually it is the photon concept, the particle concept of radiation which is almost always used. Now, each ray of electromagnetic radiation consists of two components. One is electric and other is magnetic component. And the waves of these two components travel in planes which are perpendicular to each other mean their waves travel uh, perpendicularly to each other and the waves are in phase so what is this that both pass through their maxima and minima at exactly same time now because electromagnetic radiation can 
contains electric and magnetic components so definitely there is present electric and magnetic field and that is the reason these radiations are called electromagnetic radiations now if all the components present in electromagnetic radiations have same wavelength single wavelength so the radiation is called monochromatic radiation or monochromatic light or we can call it the single color and if the components present in electromagnetic radiation have different wavelengths then the light or radiation is called polychromatic light so as I told you earlier that there are different types of electromagnetic radiations so how they are characterized from each other so there are used different parameters for characterization for their characterization and number one is wavelength lambda so here is the wave you can see there is crest and there are troughs so distance between two adjacent crests or trough is called wavelength it varies with different electromagnetic radiations and the units it is expressed in meter or centimeter while there are some other units which can also be used like angstrom and here's the conversion uh, of angstrom with other units for example one angstrom is is equal to 10 raised minus 10 meter one nanometer is equal to 10 raised 9 meter another unit is micrometer another parameter which is used to describe electromagnetic radiation is frequency new what is the frequency the number of waves passing through a fixed point per second so how many waves are passed through a fixed point per second this is called frequency of radiation and it is expressed in hertz or cycles per second and one hertz is equal to one cps one cycle per second one megahertz is equal to 10 raised 6 cycles per second another parameter is wave number and what is that it is the number of waves spread in a length of one centimeter means how many waves are accommodated in the length of one centimeter is called wave number of that electromagnetic radiation and now here is the relationship between these different parameters we know that e is equal to h nu so definitely energy and frequency are in direct relationship and nu is equal to c over lambda so we can see energy and wavelength are in inverse relationship and inverse of lambda is equal to wave number so we can say energy is in direct relationship with wave number and as I talked to you earlier that there are different types of electromagnetic radiations so here are the different electromagnetic radiations which are mentioned over here you can see cosmic rays gamma rays x-rays ultraviolet visible IR microwave radio wave and these are characterized from each other due to these different parameters wavelength frequency wave number energy for example if we talk about the wavelength so you can see here's a wave and the wavelength is going to increase from top to bottom so we can say cosmic rays has minimum wavelength while radio waves has the maximum wavelength and here is the wavelength you can see the range of wavelength for cosmic rays is 10 raised minus 4 to 10 raised minus 3 angstrom it becomes 10 raised minus 3 to 10 raised minus 1 for gamma rays then x-ray is uh, 10 raised minus 1 angstrom to 100 angstrom or 10 nanometer then electromagnetic radiation with the region 10 nanometer to 400 belongs to uv 400 nanometer to 800 to visible and so on and then here are the other parameters you can see frequency so there is inverse relationship between wavelength and frequency so we can see that the frequency uh, frequency is going to is it's going to decrease from top to bottom same is the case with wave number and then energy energy and wavelength are in inverse relationship so if wavelength is going to increase from top to bottom 
then energy is going to decrease from top to bottom so we can say cosmic energies uh, cosmic rays are most most energetic and radio waves are least energetic so dear students this was all about electromagnetic radiations thanks for watching this video and if you like my video then like it and subscribe my channel to to get uh, in touch with my upcoming videos Thank you very much.